I hope for one book every year and I almost managed. Yes, it's true, I'm writing on one standalone and I have been writing on that for five years. And it's like it will never end because every time I have a little time for that, I'm getting an invitation and traveling. So it could be funny though if I, if I, I finish up that next year. I'm starting with chapter one and writing on from chapter to chapter throughout the stories, not jumping from one chapter and all one point of view to the next same point of view. I'm not doing that. I'm writing it through from one end to the other, to the very end, knowing what's going on, but not knowing how to solve the problems. And that's funny. I mean, this I'm writing now, lots of problems, problems all over. I can see it clearly. This will take months, I mean, five, six months from now on, just to solve what I'm doing here. And I will solve it because I'm just sitting down and staying there until I have solved the problem for the day. And if it works, I give it further on to my wife, chapter one to chapter 38, reading one chapter a day while I'm writing the last seven. And then we end at the same time. I made the first one. It was okay. It, it sold very well in Denmark and so forth. Then I made the second. And I knew the second one was a little harsh. I tricked the, the fantasy of the readers maybe a little too strong. And then after reading this, my wife said to me, you know what? It's there. Now it's there. And I remember the glimpse in her eyes so fantastic that, you know, I could nearly cry because I couldn't believe it. She's not easy to satisfy like this. Now it's there. This is it. Okay. I made good standalones in my opinion. Could be nice Hollywood movies, couldn't. But this is it. So that was fantastic. That was number two. Coming back to Carl in the story is like coming back to a person that I'm not a friend with because he hates me. He hates me for not allowing him to do whatever he likes. Being lazy with legs on the table and smoking cigarettes. Legs on the table down because now comes Asad and makes him make something, right? And smokes down because now comes Rose and says, you can't do that. When I was a kid, this was the best for me as well. Hearing the radio plays, and even having the records, you know, with small theater plays, turning around next chapter and then a new one. Uh, sometimes even with, with uh, some paintings you could look at while you listen to, to this audio book, audio book. So I like it very much and uh, radio has got so much in it that the, the audio book takes up, namely you're concentrated, you're in a specific uh, mood while you're doing something else. And you're so good in it here in Germany. This is the first time I heard, for instance, in a barman, that two actors played against each other. I never heard it before. So I told many around the world that listen to the German and hear the sound of that. It makes something specific, uh, grim and darker, but even though lighter, and it's like, it's not like a discussion, it's like bringing two voices into 200. There I heard the, uh, the actors first, not the reading, but the acting. It was like hearing, what is the Hörspiel, Hörspiel uh, in the radio. So I was so thrilled about it. Aha. Uh, then it would be, you know, we have a special camps for orangutans here now in Borneo and we have a specific room for you too. We would like you to come here and take care of the orangutans for three months together with your wife and your son. And we can assure you that nothing bad will happen. No one will come into the forest and scare away the monkeys. No one will come and shoot you down. So uh, what do you say? Uh, do you, are you available? Oh yeah, I would say because I love orangutans, and especially the small ones, you know, they are so cute. <laughs>